get into the presentation. So uh, thank you all for joining today. Um, we have a quorum of the committee members and just uh, Lindsay Courtney uh, not present. Um, let's go ahead and what page am I on? Okay. So today on the agenda, we are going to give you all the financial update. We're going to talk about the Arbicare proposal, and then we'll have an open forum where we can um, talk about any concerns or discussions uh, that or questions that you may have. So on the first item on the financial update, you know, we went live with the meters in the last fiscal year. Well, actually, in 2020, right before COVID. Um, but because there is a minimum threshold um, in order for Museum Park to um, achieve that point where we start splitting revenues, um, that did not happen during COVID. But last fiscal year, we did actually hit that threshold of $524,000. Um, so we, uh, you can see, I don't know if this is big enough for you to see, but you can see at the bottom, the PBD split was $20,541. And that check is in the process of being um, remitted to uh, the Greater Southeast Management District. So Nikki, y'all should be, oh, sorry, Midtown had to be rewritten. Nikki, y'all should already have this check right now, correct? We, we just received it, yes. Yeah, okay. So we've got $20,541 in the bank, and we provided PDFs of the um, income statement for the last fiscal year. Uh, just to give you a brief overview, the city fiscal year runs from July until um, June. So we are currently in FY23. Uh, we will start FY24 in July, and I'm going to talk about FY23 revenues in just a little bit. But so this, what you're seeing up here, where you see my cursor on the top of the of the the income statement, is July 2021 to June of 2022, and then July 1st of 2022, we entered fiscal year 23, which we are in right now. So I'm not sure on here where we mark uh, that the the meter revenue achieved the 559. I'm not sure which month it was that we achieved that threshold, but it was pretty late in the fiscal year. I believe it was April or May. Um, Rami, do you happen to recall when we we could send that to you, we could send that information to y'all? But you can see that overall the gross revenues. I'm circling it right here, and next time I'll have it outlined. I, I'm sorry for that. I'm looking uh, at it right now, Mari. I should have it in a minute. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Rami. So we, uh, for the fiscal year, the gross meter revenues, including permit sales, so the permit sales also become part of the of the revenue share, was five hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars, almost five hundred and sixty thousand dollars, in fact. So that means we met the threshold of five hundred and twenty four. So that difference um, is down here, where you see the thirty four thousand two hundred and thirty four. Um, that is minus any expenses. So the expenses are pretty minimal. We've got them right here. Oh, so we we charged in June. So we only had one month where we actually hit the hurdle and then achieved an excess in order to have a share. So in the months that we, you'll see the expenditures over in July, August, September, October, we are not charging um, a portion of the expenses to the parking benefit district during this period because we haven't met that threshold of 524. That's all on the city. So in June is when we hit the threshold. So a portion of the expenses for basically, this is the credit card fees, which we have to pay out no matter what. And um, there's a limited um, expenses related to operations for the collection and maintenance of the meters. So that is, um, taken out from the gross um, revenue. So that leaves us with 34,234. And once you split that 40% to the city, which is 13, almost $14,000, and then 60% to the parking benefit district, which comes out to $20,541. And that check was cut. So this is the FY22 income statement. Um, Y'all can take a look at that. And if you have any questions, I, I know we just sent it to you. 
like this morning. So um, if you want to take some time and uh, get back to me, that's fine too. Or if you have any questions right now, I'm happy to answer those. Otherwise, we can go on to the FY23 income statement. I, I have one quick question. So salary is thirty-four thousand. <clears throat> is that overall split among all of you? Does that include the compliance officers? We don't charge for compliance officers. That is oh, just okay. Yeah. So um, okay, great. That is basically just the um, folks who maintain and collect Admin. the meetings. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah the compliance uh, team is not charged out of this because they have a you know, they are citations and, and that comes out of a different bucket. We don't put that in the in the meter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Maria, okay. if I can just, I'm sorry, yeah. if I can just clarify something real quick. So that's obviously an annual salary that even if we do charge, it's only at a quarter of an FT, like the right. spreadsheet says. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Sorry, I should have pointed that out. Thank you, Rami. It's a quarter of the FTE because they're not, they're doing other stuff beyond just, they're not just in museum park. Understood. Thank you. OK. All right, I'm going to go on to the FY23 income statement. Now, this is just a projection. And um, over here, we've only got the actuals for six months up until December. So you've got the permit sale, then the meter revenue, then the gross revenue. Uh, we do have to pay sales tax to the state on parking. So that's netted out. So that leaves your net revenue at the bottom line. Um, Rami, did we project out when they may hit the, because right now your projection is showing that um, it's $567,000 in gross revenue for the fiscal year. That's under projection, so that's 12 months. Is that also looking like a June hit again? Um, yes, projection is to hit almost at exactly the same time as last year, which would be in mid-June. OK. Yep. Now, I, this is, you know, we've still got six months in the fiscal year, or well, actually seven months now. I mean, five months. Sorry, I can't even do math in my head anymore. <laughs> five months. Uh, so the projection may go up or down if there's big events that drive people to the area. That also has an impact. We do know uh, Final Four in March may have some impact. Um, on on parking meter revenues, but we are not factoring that final four um, uh, special event into our projections right now. So it's looking almost like the same as last year, um, where we have a split after, um, and this one has, um, we don't even show any expenses netted out yet for his staff, that, that, that quarter of an FTE. But we're looking at a gross, um, over the threshold of 524 of $43,000, of which 26,000 would go to the parking benefit district. So that would mean in uh, on June 30th of this year, uh, we have 30 days from that. So by July 30th, we should reconcile the accounts and send over a check for FY23 to the Greater Southeast Management. Um, so if we do not spend any of the funds that we just mailed the check, the 20, the previous file, which was $20,000, um, and then we add the 26, it, the, the benefit district will have about $46,000 banked um, in July. Now, if we spend some of it, and we will develop a budget, kind of like we do for our other parking benefit districts, we don't have that ready right now, but we'll have that at the next meeting where we can show you, well, if you ex if you spend this much, this is how much you'll have in the next fiscal year. And then we also want to keep track of any recurring expenses that may occur. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, now, these numbers, like I said, can go up um, if they're special events. They can also go down if we get hit, you know, again, like. COVID was something that was unanticipated, unexpected. So anything could change about um, on-street parking. Um, but usually, if, if things go as we've seen in most of my, you know, 17 or so years in parking, it generally, our projections generally track. I think COVID was the only th time that really threw us out of balance and, and we just couldn't figure out how to project. But things seem to be heading in a better direction. Of course, if we expand the hours of operation, 
that is going to benefit the museum park parking benefit district, of course, because we will the threshold does not change. That threshold stays at 524. So anything that we generate after 6 p.m. until whatever time the meter shut off, that's all going to be up for a split. So that could um, positively um, impact the PBD um, starting in the next fiscal year. We will not have meters turned on after 6 p.m. before the next fiscal year. Uh, we'll be working on the outreach and the education and kind of um, taking our plans uh, public at that point. Do you all have any questions on this slide? Not on and the we, slide, but just um, just to make sure I understand. we, You're saying the meter, the change in time for meter um, revenue collection. I'm sorry, my, my, my ninja camera messes up all the time. Sorry. <laughs> so um, the meter collection revenue after 6 p.m. won't start until the next fiscal year because there's an outreach component, council, all the things that need to happen in order for that to be activated, correct? Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. just wanted to make sure I heard that correctly. Yeah, we've got outreach, education, and then we've got to up, do updates with our signage, our websites. Uh, um, there's a, a lot of like uh, implementation that needs to take place okay. with that afterwards that we need some time for. And just educating the public when you when you do something of this nature, it's really vital that we do as much outreach as we can and give as much time as we can because who really gets impacted are employees that are parking on the street and they've got to find other options. And that's usually the biggest pushback that we get from businesses is where does my staff go? And, um, you know, while it is not my job to make sure that other people's staff have place to park, we also want to do what we can to try and make it a little bit less painful because it is, you know, it's a change. So oh, okay. I it agree. just happened quickly. <laughs> For sure. Okay. But we're working on it. Okay. So, I'm yes. sorry. I have a question about that too. Maybe I missed it. What is, what are y'all thinking now about the expanded hours or what they would actually be citywide? Has that been thought out yet or is it the public going to give y'all feedback or? So, we are working on our plan right now. Yeah. Our, our first step is to collect data. So, we've been okay. conducting occupancy surveys. We have gathered all the data and now it's all being kind of crunched. Okay. And and in a kind of, uh, we're doing our analysis and review to develop and finalize those recommendations. We have an idea based on what we see out there and the activity that we see. We think that it'll go in a certain direction. Analyze all that data. Okay, cool, thanks. Plan, and then we'll have a plan to share. Okay, I'm going to jump to the next slide then. So uh, just in a nutshell, for fiscal year 22, we've already sent the check for $20,541 that is in the bank. And then the projected revenue for FY23 is $26,151. So um, on July 1st, if we don't spend it, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have about $46,500 in the bank. Okay, on the next slide, so the one thing that we've been discussing of late is the um, Arbor Care. And so I, uh, Kathleen, thank you for sharing proposals. Nikki, I think you also sent us some information on Arbor Care. So we've kind of provided the information here. I from what from our last meeting, I was under the impression that we wanted to the advisory committee wanted to expend some funds on trees in in the museum park and get some um, either it was assessments or irrigation. So y'all are going to have to remind me of that. But we've got um, uh, the Bartlett inventory and we've got their recommendations. And then we had an Arbor Care proposal, which was to take a tree inventory from all the trees in the median, um, and which is, I think the number is 203 trees, and then a tree inventory in the right of way, which was up to 245 trees. Um, and then also, they would include Arbor Scope license, which would be for three years for a total of $9,400. This was the only proposal I saw. There was a proposal from Flores for what for irrigation of 10 trees a week at $180, which came out to about $6,400, I believe. 
So, uh, let me ask you something real. Nikki, is that coming out of this budget, the irrigation for the new trees that urban forestry is? I didn't think, I thought that was coming out of Houston Southeast budget. No, um, we haven't decided where it's going to come from just yet because it hasn't been definitive, presented to us definitively on our side. So the Arbor Care, um, can you see? Okay, I'm just going to turn it, the camera off, guys. Sorry. So the Arbor Care, specifically for this effort, anything attributed to this work would come out of this budget. Um, it has not been rolled over to our general budget for Houston Southeast for any additional maintenance outside of this care proposal, this initial work. So, so last night at the Museum Park Super Neighborhood meeting, we discussed this and there was general consensus and those who were there, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we had originally thought that you know, when we spoke with Bartlett um, a few months ago about, you know, what, how should we manage this? The, their initial response was, well, let's do an assessment on all of the esplanades, um, see what's out there, see what needs to be done, which sounded reasonable, very reasonable at the time. However, in rethinking that um, and speaking with Bartlett again, they said, well, you know, you've already got this inventory on Caroline for the median so why don't we proceed with additional pruning and fertilization on those trees and they were supposed to send me a uh, proposal this morning which i don't yet have so i really think that that was the direction that the super neighborhood um, would like to take and this arbor scope license that was something i don't know kyle i'm not sure if the park is using that but it's kind of i think it's a gps tool which i'm not sure that i don't know that we need that level but I, that's to be discussed but in any case instead of doing additional tree inventories tree assessments the thinking was ugh, let's try and actually get some work done and try to get things going on caroline and i was also reminded last night that Nikki, you may have information from Bartlett. When we finished the Caroline Promenade, there was a little bit of money left and we decided to do some pruning on Caroline. I mean, I think it was like high risk branches that the city is typically responsible for, but I'm not sure exactly what that scope was and you know what, what Bartlett's records show of that effort. So we'd need to incorporate that. So in summary, the thinking last night was, Let's do um, pruning and irrigation on Caroline this year with what we can. And, you know, depending on cost and then next year do an overall assessment of the community, because it turns out that a neighborhood association has done some work that I was not aware of until last night. So we want to make sure that we're not redoing mm -hmm. the work that others have done. So I'm a little bit hesitant to do anything other than what we actually have data for, which is on Caroline. That makes sense. It does okay. make sense. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to see what Bartlett's, Bartlett has or will send you because you that'll know. that yeah, right? Because <laughs> that would determine how we proceed with the work on Caroline. They did perform some work um, with the um, dollars that were remaining from the planning and pre-design effort, I'll pull those records and share them with the committee. That way um, everyone knows what work was done in relation to Arbor Care. But clarifying the two different lanes that we're speaking of, the work that is being proposed, is it my understanding that we are asking or we would like for Bartlett to perform this work using the parking benefit dollars and then transfer long-term maintenance to the management district. I'm just trying to be explicitly clear on what we're asking or what we'd like to see. No, I, uh, well, I think that's up to the committee. I think the thinking last night was that this, that Arbor Care is key to everything that, you know, all our mobility, everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's a key element. So we would use uh, this money for, Arbor care that is not covered under any other umbrella. So, and the reason I brought up the other 10 trees, those are new and just require short-term irrigation. 
And I thought that we had thought, thought that Miguel could do that under the existing Houston Southeast budget. So I thought that was a different topic outside of the benefit district. Yeah, we need, I need to revisit that to make sure that I'm clear on what that looks like. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to remove the Flores quality control from our future discussions if that is Thank not you. going to be considered for the PBD budget. Is that Thank you. correct? That's fine. Please okay. do. Yeah, for the moment. I mean, knowing that the budget is, is uh, mm -hmm. a dynamic document. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that is, um, you know, when we create that budget document, um, we will, like, if you, Kathleen, whenever you hear back from Bartlett, if you can send us what uh, that Caroline um, pruning and irrigation estimate is, we can include that so you can see how much is going to be, you know, expended, what's, what's left over, what rolls over into next fiscal year. Right, I'll and, send it to you. And I would also like to get, um, Sandy said that MPNA had done again some work on Southmore, which I again I was not aware of until last night. So I will try to get the proposal that was submitted to them and who that firm is that did that work, just so we have a comparison. Okay, and if and did we look at any other uh, firms to do the work outside of Bartlett? I I have not because I I just I don't know Kyle, you tell me I kind of. Mm really impartial to Bartlett if they can perform. And that's that's part of my concern is performance. I know. So that's that's that would be my only uh, concern about making sure we have comparable quotes in the event. Um, you know, there there's additional performance concerns. Nikki, do you all have um, agreements with any of do you, who does Greater Southeast Management District use for any Arbor Care projects? Uh, we've used a couple of companies, and I can shoot the scope over to them. Yeah, um, Bartlett has been one of them, but performance has been the top concern with their work um, along some of our other corridors. And so, um, in in all fairness, I would like to make sure we have three quotes that um, align with this work, just so that we have comparable pricing. Um, and other firms to consider. And I understand Bartlett is familiar with Caroline and the project and all those things, and that is definitely a plus, but I just want to be mindful that we we need to make sure that efficiency is key and then the level of work is what we expect. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you, Nikki. Sorry to interrupt you. Finish. I'm sorry. No, that's all. I mean, there's a level of service that, that we, we want to have in place and just because there is partiality and we, we've worked with them before, you know, that does not negate um, performance deficits. Um, so, uh, Kathleen, when you sent over the proposal for Caroline, Nikki, will you get quotes for the same work from your other um, companies that y'all have worked with? So we have three quotes that we can share with the committee prior to our next meeting. Sure. I think our next meeting, if we, you know, we meet quarterly, we'll probably, we'll meet next in April. So then we could talk about January, February, and March. Um, and if we could have this um, information to give to the committee, then we could plan to, hopefully there can be some conversations within uh, Museum Park Super Neighborhood so that we can hopefully take a vote to maybe get some of the work going um, before the fiscal year even ends for us. Uh, my, Mario, let me ask you this. Is, oh, sorry, go Nikki. No, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert. I don't have a very green thumb. Um, however, is there a time constraint that we have to think oh, about when pruning great. and mulching and all those things? Um, I know yeah. there is a system that exists. Yeah, I'm not 100% right. sure about it, so I want to, <laughs> right. to make sure that we're working in tandem with that timeline as well. Yep. Yeah, you read my mind, Nikki. So uh, I was going to ask, um, Maria, can we do things by e-vote? Yeah, we can We can send everything out and do an e-vote. I can ask for a vote by email. Um, and, so if we need to get started sooner than later, then we've got to move fast. And, and I always want to be mindful. And Kyle, you're being quite, kind of quiet, so speak up if I'm. you, you have the expertise in this arena. But uh, we really, really believe, and I know, Nikki, you do too, you're a systems person, we 
really like to make sure we have a systematic approach, you know, crafting that next year. So it's not just a one-off arborist. It's somebody that we can craft a professional relationship with. And Kyle has his hand up or he did. Oh, he, no, he, did. he does. He still does. Go ahead, Kyle. So uh, I guess just the, the only thing that I would be concerned about is the, the like, so Bartlett does have the current inventory of Caroline, right? So if uh, I think that we don't have anything else that is outside of that, that is, uh, that someone's maintaining like an inventory of the uh, trees for the area. And I will say that that can be uh, quite an undertaking. I mean, I know like at the Conservancy, we've, we've documented 12,000 trees in the park and that's all included by, you know, GPS coordinates. So um, the way that we were able to, you know, focus and strategize on what we were going to care for was by narrowing down that very rough inventory to a point where then we were able to work with Bartlett to do a very specific assessment of a set number of trees that we had already done an inventory for. So um, I guess that I just want to make sure that there is like a repository or something of who's keeping up with an inventory if we do end up using different type of vendors besides Bartlett. Like if Bartlett's doing it this quarter and then Davey's doing it next year and then uh, Flores or somebody is doing it, you know, another one, that there's a way to hold that. I don't know if that would be something that Southeast Management District would keep or if it's MPSN or, or who it is that would keep the tree inventory to make sure we're not duplicating efforts on the same trees each year too. Because that's another thing too, where we've, we've decided like there's 3000 trees here in the park that we're gonna do our focused effort on, but 300 of those each year are going to be touched, but we're not gonna like spend a arborist level you know, care on those for another 10 years, unless there's like a, a dire need or something like that. So. Kyle, when y'all built your inventory, do you have a special program that you use to, is, do you use ArborScope or is it your own internal program? So we've declined ArborScope each time because, uh, I mean, they've presented it to us literally every single time we've had a proposal from them. And that's mainly because they have to use ArborScope no matter what for them to do their own work. And so when they're going through doing their assessments, they're plugging the data in. So it is kind of like an add-on service that they're trying to get their clients to buy into. And it is a very great program if you're not working with like ArcGIS is what we use where we maintain our and I don't even like to say that it's a database because ArcGIS is just a representation of the spreadsheet that yeah. all of the, the data is in. Now, one of the things that we have worked on is that that inventory grew organically over a period of like 10 years. And so, right. uh, you know, it now has gotten to a point where it's like, okay, the forestry folks are looking at uh, implementing iTree, which is a, 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 um, a, a freeware that is developed by, um, I forget which university it is right now, but it is a database that helps you with managing urban forestry. And um, iTree is, is what is a direction that we will be going toward to act as an actual database on showing what care has been done for individual trees. Now, the other aspect of that is the identification of each tree and do they, are they tagged? If it's not tagged, I'm sorry, it, it's, it's, it's like you're gonna just, you're gonna spin in circles. You're not gonna know what trees you've done and what ones you haven't if you're not coordinating them with either a tag or an actual map. So that's, well, that was my next thought, Kyle, because you know I'm a big um, GIS fan, but I don't know that we have the capacity for, um, for an information service I'm, I'm in that kind of database. But what I think Bartlett has done to date, they do use ArborScope, and I do agree with you that the ArborScope option is an upsell that I'm not real enthused about. I'm I'm also very happy with spreadsheets if they have enough um, information on them. And I think one thing that they've done, and you've seen the the data, which I have not actually seen it other than what's in the Caroline Promenade report, the spreadsheets were for me as a geologist, not an urban forest forester, but they were plenty for me to know what tree I'm talking about, what the previous condition was and what may need to be done on it. 
So is a spreadsheet, do you think is sufficient? I mean. It, or do we need GPS? It, it depends well, uh, how many rows you have on that spreadsheet. But I think if there's a spreadsheet with GPS coordinates and right. the information all logged, you know, at the city, we have ArcGIS, so we can upload something to my city and you can have a separate layer. We could probably um, work with the planning department to just upload that information. But, you know, if data gets old, mm -hmm. it gets old. You know, it, you have to you have to make sure someone's keeping it updated. And that is where we're going to run into challenges, even if we upload it to the city's ArcGIS system and create kind of a, a a database there, a uh, map it out. Um, the update of that is going to be critical. Right. So Nikki, as as really kind of the official owner of of this benefit district, um, what about Houston Southeast or GIS? You guys have that, right? So we do. Um, I would need to see what the capacity would be for the the maintaining of that database. Um, and what we would, who we would need to have in place to make sure that information is done. I know it's not a daily task, but I would still need to have someone who is focused and intentional about making sure that we have an accurate listing of the work being done. Um, if I can have until next week to get some more information on how we can facilitate that, that would be helpful. Kyle, um, you brought you brought a couple of points, um, a couple of points really to the forefront, and I'd like to just get some clarity on a few things. So as we, I guess I'll just have to wait. I'm thinking out loud, sorry, but the um, Bartlett proposal, I will put a pin in my next steps until we receive that, because that'll give us a starting point. That'll let us know where we're starting with what trees and what work has to be done, and then look at how we build out um, the ArcGIS, as well as the system for managing the work long term. Nikki, did they give you the uh, Caroline Promenade um, data electronically or just that spreadsheet that's in the report? I think you I think you may have sent that to us. I'll check and see. Um, I think we do have an Excel document of it. Well, I'm just the 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 ArcGIS that they did, as Kyle said, they use Arborscope, which is, you know, I think you can. Kyle, is that translatable to ArcGIS? Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah, it um, is. That's, so yeah, we can it. maybe we can experiment with that data or those data, and upload that and see how that you know how challenging it is. I think it's pretty easy actually, but I haven't done it. So <laughs> famous words. <laughs> And I mean, like Mario was talking about, the different layers are really great. But mm -hmm. I would you now um, they I have I haven't been actually up close to the trees on Caroline to see did Bartlett actually affix tree tags whenever they are associated with the numbers that they're talking about in their report. Uh, I don't think so. I think I don't they, think they did. They put uh, GPS locations. They they the proposal where they talk about the tree inventory they do say that they will put a brass tag on oh, every right. that, on the tree that's inventory. They put it in their proposal for um, whatever I've got up on the screen. The description of the tree inventory did indicate a brass tag on a tree. And that's what they but, typically do if, unless you specifically ask them to not. And so I didn't know if they for sure did it on Caroline or not. Well, that's a good question then. I don't know. I don't know about I Caroline. Don't, I don't think they did. I, I'm looking. I don't think they did. But they did an inventory of Caroline. We do have an inventory. We do have an inventory, but I don't think they tagged anything. Okay. I'm looking now. And just so that I'm clear, we've got two. We've got two potential projects here. One is irrigation and pruning on Caroline to be started sooner rather than later, because of no fertilization. Fertilization. Not no irrigation. Fertilization. Okay. And then. In the larger scheme, the larger scope, we want to have a tree inventory and kind of figure out how we're going to, um, where that tree inventory is going to live so that we can develop a plan for moving forward and taking care of these trees. Yeah, systematic 
approach to Arbor Care Management, I think is that broader. Sister, okay. I'm learning all kinds of new stuff. So um, this is Russ. I have a question about this proposal here. So does that mean this is doing inventory on all the other streets besides Caroline or what streets do they define that they're doing this inventory on? If this was, oh, if, sorry, go ahead, Maureen. No, you go ahead, Kathleen, because uh, they sent it to you. So you're more familiar, but I don't, I don't recall, I don't recall seeing which places they were going to do. We just, we looked at the Esplanade streets, um, okay. Russ, and he, on Caroline, we only used the Esplanades, and on this particular uh, proposal, they included the median as well as the trees in the right of way. Because as you know, we've got a ton of trees in the right of way. However, <laughs> subsequently, as we learned trying to find locations for these new trees that urban forestry is sharing, people are really protective about those trees in the right of way. So I'm kind of thinking we might not want to touch those. So we were talking about like on Crawford and Southmore and Calumet where what this is probably talking about them. Correct. In the okay. next year. But, okay. but that's where my confusion last night was because Sandy said that they'd done some work on Southmore, which I was not aware of. So again, that it just goes back to a systematic approach. What was done? What did they use? Which trees did they treat? And let's okay. put it all in one master plan so we're not doing redundant work. Okay, so we will get that um, whatever uh, the MP uh, NA Neighborhood Association has done. Kathleen, you've already requested that. Right. And requested um, the, uh, do, do we, uh, we're waiting for the quote for the fertilization and pruning on Caroline. So that will be coming. Nikki is going to be looking into um, their own G Greater Southeast Management District's capability for ArcGIS and how we could potentially um, take in a tree inventory. Yes. Okay. As well as additional quotes, right? And then two additional quotes, yes. Two additional quotes. I knew there was something else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to try and get a vote on these before, I think, is March when they have to get everything done in? Is is that, or earlier? Oh, Kyle, you can speak to this, but I think it can actually be done any time, but the earlier in the year, the better. Okay. So as soon as we get these things, we can send it all out to the committee, send out the three quotes, and at least take a vote on the Arbor Care for um, the, the trees on Caroline, and that's just fertilization and pruning. The Caroline uh, median esplanades, right? Right. Okay. So this okay. proposal that's on the screen right now, though, uh, do we know, is that all inclusive then of every, now, median, every right of way in the neighborhood? It had a max of 369 trees. Okay. So I can't imagine that that's, of course, yeah. the trees need to be six inches in diameter. So maybe that is yeah. all the trees that are over six inches, six inches or more in diameter. I'm not sure, but I, I felt like it, it probably wasn't enough trees. Yeah, and Kyle, what, what what I think what we asked them to focus on were more the heritage trees, which doesn't, okay. you know, looking back on it really doesn't make any sense. So, <laughs> all right, so this Arbor Care proposal that I've got up on the screen is kind of going out the door because now we need to look at it in a different way. Right? Is that, that right? It, it, unless anybody on the super neighborhood has a different opinion, that was our understanding last night, but we haven't heard from Courtney or I'm not sure who Gillian Thomas is. Or Thomas she's with Gillian. Greater Southeast. She's with, she's with oh, okay. Assistant. Okay. And um, is there anybody who, oh, Amy's here. Amy, I guess you were in agreement last night. Yes, I'm on track with everything that we're talking about now. Okay. I, Thank I, you. I okay. All right. So we've got a couple of things to get back to you on um so that we can uh, maybe proceed with a vote um on on the caroline street so i'm just going to move on from here in the interest of time our next um item on the agenda was open forum and i did want to give an opportunity to lindsay courtney thank you for joining us today i think this is the first meeting that he's been able to join where everyone's on the call 
So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I just, you know, I realize it's lunch hour, so we appreciate you and apologize for the timing. We will change timings of future meetings to accommodate that. But um, I would love uh, for you to yeah. introduce yourself to us and then we could go around the committee and have everyone introduce themselves to you too. Well, my name is Courtney Lindsay. I'm the uh, owner and um, chef at uh, Mo Better Bruce right down on uh, Sophomore Center. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of uh, this committee. And uh, once uh, it was brought to my attention, I was like, this is a really cool uh, opportunity to kind of make a little change and impact uh, in, the, in the area. So mm -hmm. thank you. Well, thank you for joining us today. Best truffle fries I've had at Mo Better Blues. So thank you. I still think about them. Um, why don't we start with the committee? Kathleen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? I'll just go around the room. <laughs> I'm Kathleen O'Reilly, uh, president of Museum Park Super Neighborhood. Thank you. Amy? I'm Amy Yates, executive manager of the Houston Museum District Association. Kyle? Hi, I'm uh, Kyle Wolf. I'm the director of maintenance of Herman Park Conservancy and also the vice president of Museum Park Super Neighborhood. And Russ? Hi, I'm Russ Frank, and I I'm on the Super Neighborhood Council also, and I represent the people that live in condo buildings in the neighborhood. And uh, my day job is I work at Metro. Thank you. And then we've got uh, some team members from the Greater Southeast Management District. So, Nikki? Sure. Nikki Knight, Program Manager for the Greater Southeast Management District. And you have with you Jillian Thomas. Jillian Thomas, yes. Yes, Jillian Thomas. I am the Admin Assistant for Greater Southeast Management District. Thank you. And then uh, just real fast, the Park Houston team. So Melanie Curry, why don't we start with you? Uh, Melanie Curry, I'll be your, your admin support. If you have any uh, questions for the city, I'm more than happy to assist you. She will be sending emails and sending invites. <laughs> and then Rami? Hi everyone, Rami Arafat, Senior Division Manager, Park Houston. Um, I do the budget for the PPD and then uh, whatever else Mario wants me to do. <laughs> they tell me what to. Uh, Norman Holt. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Norman Holt. I am Division Manager over Meter Operations. Um, if you have any meter or signage issues in that area, I'm the guy you contact. Yeah, Holt is your man for that. And then last but not least, Miss Kelly Frazier. Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Frazier. I'm the admin coordinator and whatever um, Maria and Melanie needs. I'm part of the admin team. We're here to help. OK. And then, um, well, OK, so now I, we have an open forum. So if there's anything, I know we've just got a few minutes left in the meeting, so I want to be uh, respectful of your times. But if there is anything that anybody would like to add, um, please feel free to share i just want to say i'm i'm excited about this uh, this work i think we're going to be able to do some amazing things yeah um with good strategy and good implementation yes thank you nikki yeah and i would like to add to nikki's that man mario you have really brought this district you really have you brought this you and your team have brought and houston southeast have brought this district and the smarts on the super neighborhood council i can't tell everybody how much i appreciate their input and keeping us on the straight and narrow <laughs> yeah no it's, it's gonna be a good... you really have done a fabulous job start to start to start to date it is a team effort so it's not just me it's everyone on this call so thank you all <laughs> does anybody else want to compliment me too <laughs> you're awesome passing them out <laughs> passing them out <laughs> Y'all are great. Uh, um, if there's uh, no other comments, we can adjourn the meeting or? Well, I was just going to ask Nikki, uh, I don't know if you want to try to schedule something with us to, to discuss like the, you know, like the database or whatever, or a GIS stuff, if that will help you to figure out if you guys have the resources or ability, I'm happy to do that. That's, a, that's actually a good thing, yeah. It definitely is, and that is in my notes to bug Kyle and everybody <laughs> on this call. <laughs> no, I got perfect. It, absolutely, Kyle. I agree. Uh, Nikki, another thing that might be worth considering is like teaming up with a university, like a grad student project where they can create a database and mapping tools and whatnot. Um, we, yeah. we use college students a lot, so I mean, it could, I've, I've used them to count cars. And we so and we also have a relationship with American Youth Works and Texas Conservation Corps. So we have a couple of things or 
couple right. of ways we can approach this. So that'd be and good. Kyle, do, does the Conservancy not have a U of H environmental science former student or relationship um, with that department? So we have had uh, interns from them, uh, but we've had interns from A and M, you know, U of H, you have different ones that all were either GIS specialists or whatever that helped over the years. We've had individuals from those places that period. And that, that's but that assumes that you have that assumes that you have the equipment. Yes, yeah, and really all that our interns utilize are a, a Garmin GPS unit and um, and an RGIS subscription. That's yeah, that might be worth purchasing. Okay, thank you. And then yeah. Nikki, one final question. The other trees that are being installed by Urban Forestry, because that uh, Jeremy said that those would be installed starting around February 10th. Do we have an irrigation plan for those? Or I didn't realize that that wasn't budgeted yet. No, I don't. So I'll have to get on that today or first thing in the morning to figure out how we um, align with that. And I need to get with Mike. Um, Mike has also communicated a few things, and I just want to make sure that I have a clear understanding of what we're asking Miguel to do and for how long. He provided the numbers, but I just need to make sure that it is on his schedule to actually do the work and what it will cost. So let me get let me get my eyes back on that document and on this on that particular project so I can have clarity for you or provide clarity for you. Okay, great. And you'll let us know within Absolutely. the next few days. Okay. And we Absolutely. also, this is a different topic. Sorry, Maria, but we also had a really good conversation with Mike last night about the traffic calming islands and how to make them cohesive within the Caroline Promenade um, master plan effort. Okay. So we're on a good, good trajectory here. Thank you all. And Maria, thanks again to your team and the input from everybody here. Just you know, it takes a lot of lot of heads to make things happen well. It sure does. A uh, quick question: Urban forestry is that the parks department? It like, is parks department. Okay, just making. And we're working with Jeremy Burks on that particular project. And do they keep a database of city trees? Is That's it what I was about to say? So they have. I, when I've talked to Jeremy in the past, he has said that it's basically a spreadsheet, and then our GIS that are you know the trees that are within the right of way. So now they've stayed out of parks and haven't really you know, done any documentation of park trees. But with these being right of way trees or being Esplanade trees, it's very possible he may already have an actual uh, listing or ID number associated with it. And maybe they can be serving two purposes. Oh, we need to ask him then. Nikki, will you, you want to touch base with Jeremy or do you want me to or? I will. I have a couple of questions for Jeremy, so I'll, I'll reach okay. out to him. Yeah, if they already had something, then that's, you know, we start with that. I think it makes most sense. Thanks, okay. Kyle. Thanks for sharing that. I'm sorry I didn't think of it before, but because it's like he's just, they've always stayed out of parks, but I'm like, oh, wait, we're not in the park anymore. He's got this one probably. So, yeah, you know what? <laughs> the last minute thoughts are always my best. <laughs> okay. Any more comments? No, I think I have my marching orders. Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, second. 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 All in favor, thank you. Okay, y'all have a great Thursday, and uh, we'll put a meeting on your calendar for April at two o'clock. Um, Courtney, three o'clock. Sorry, three o'clock. Courtney, if that is outside of your lunch rush, okay, that's good. Yeah, we'll put it for three, and it'll be a Thursday. Um, and we'll get information to you by email before then. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Thanks oh again. Great meeting. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Right, thank, bye -bye. You. thank you. Bye-bye. Good weather. <laughs>